Harry's Wife, Part 102.80.1 Archetypes Breaking Down the Bimbo Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Yes, your ears are no doubt rejoicing in joy as the consequence of the fact that your glorious narrator is going to help you through the latest extracts from the latest episode of Arsy Wipes, rather than forcing you having to listen to that syrupy drawl. We turn to the Mail Online that has waded in, and Joe Tweedy tells us, Harry's wife admits she judged Paris Hilton ahead of speaking to her for Archetype's podcast on The Bimbo, saying the socialite was the interviewee she was most nervous about. Harry's wife told listeners on the latest episode of her Archetype's Spot a Lie pod crap that she was nervous about interviewing Paris Hilton because she'd had a judgment about the socialite. Pity play, false humility. The latest episode of the Duchess of Sussex's pod crap series, entitled Breaking Down the Bimbo, saw her come face to face with the 41 year old socialite. As they discussed her rise to fame as a reality TV star in the early noughties. Before the interview began, Harry's wife, <coughs> also 41, told her audience that she was anxious ahead of the recording, saying, I've been the most nervous about this one. Now, once again, this is Harry's wife demonstrating two things. One, she's a shit interviewer. Two, her narcissism compels her to make it all about her. Her narcissism perceives a threat to control because of the judgment that was made about Paris Hilton, and therefore, in order to cut it off at the past to nullify that threat, she has to try and engender sympathy from the audience, from the listeners, by explaining, I was nervous about this one. Could you imagine the late, great Sir David Frost... announcing, ooh, I was a little bit nervous about interviewing Tricky Dicky, you know. Hmm, I would had a judgment about him. He said he wasn't a thief, but I didn't agree. Or, for those of you who are uh, from the United Kingdom, Parkinson, about to interview Grace Jones, saying, I'm a little bit nervous about interviewing this lady. She is known as being a bit feisty. I know she's hit Russell Harty in the past. I hope she doesn't hit me. Or, any interviewer that you care to think of in your relevant country who is of calibre, a decent journalist and television host, that they would start off before any kind of interview by saying, oh, I'm a bit nervous about talking to this person. Yes, I, I, I judge them. Or I'd said a few nasty words about them in the past. But this shows, of course, the calibre of Harry's wife's poor style of interviewing and, furthermore, the nature by which her narcissism functions. The article continues by explaining to us. Uh, she explained, Because while I'm embarrassed to admit it, she's not, she just thinks she is, I had a judgment about Paris. And I don't like having judgment. Doesn't feel good. Oh, you're so holier than thou. Thank goodness St. Harry's wife of merchandising is here on this planet to lead us all to salvation. But I had to be real about that, because when I grew up, she was beautiful, rich, and famous. She's the same fucking age, apparently, as you. Well, younger than you, undoubtedly. So it's not like you're looking up to her. You'd be looking down on her as you were growing up. So that doesn't make sense anyway. Hilton responded saying she was also hesitant about an audience with the Duchess of Sussex, because I'm just a shy person, and we haven't met before. The Frank episode saw Harry's wife discuss the labels of bimbo and dumb blonde, exploring why brains and beauty in a woman have been historically pitted against each other. Well, it might be something to do with the prevalence of female narcissists using their looks 
in order to get what they want and pursuing that rather than utilizing brain power. That could be part of the issue. In the pod craps intro, Harry's wife opened up about her own experiences of being valued purely on her physical appearance, once again, of course, making it all about her. When she starred as a deal or no deal briefcase girl in 2006, very proud moment, I'm sure. The Duchess of Sussex said she was grateful for the work as she tried to break through as an actress and pay the bills, but not how it made me feel, which was not smart. Well, interestingly, at the time, you seemed to be absolutely reveling in the role, and it probably accorded very much with your personality, wanting to show off what you thought was your delightful and enticing body, and that you could do something easy, not too taxing, because after all, somebody who struggles to understand the difference between guttural and visceral and archetypes and stereotypes perhaps is just best suited to the less taxing activity of opening suitcases. Here, of course, is all of this nonsense narrative that Harry's wife's narcissism causes her to pump out, which is this. I believe in strong females, independent, powerful female empowerment. Although, if you look at my history, I've behaved anything but. I utilised my father to get me acting jobs, and he also paid for my tuition and generally helped me through life, spoiling me, treating me like a princess. I then apparently met numerous men that I leveraged off in terms of money, that I leveraged off in terms of character traits, although of course she doesn't realise that, and that I drew them into me for the purpose of accessing their social circles. I then of course utilised aspects of them to pass off as my own, for instance, recipes from the chef, the tig, and then, of course, with my first husband or second, depending on who you ask, and then my second or third husband, depending on who you ask, I've simply utilised them to enable me to get roles in films, become more famous, and then, of course, be known around the world by virtue of the fact of the man that I married. Yes, all of that really does fit with your narrative, doesn't it, of female empowerment. And this is the problem that Harry's wife has. She has no credibility. That what comes out of her mouth doesn't match what she does, which is typical of the type of narcissist that she is. And of course, she does all of these things because at the time her narcissism dictates that this was the right thing to do. So stick on a red dress and show off part of your boobs and hold a suitcase with your mouth open and wear a short skirt because that's the right thing to do in order to assert control, draw fuel, get character traits and residual benefits. Go for it. But later on, look back on it and go, oh, no, 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 no. Um, although I did it, I didn't feel good about it. Revision of history. The article continues, the California-based royal who appeared on the program in 2006 revealed that she and other women on the show were forced to line up, what, at gunpoint? For various beauty treatments, including padding in your bra. Surely, as a strong, independent, empowered lady, you go, I don't need to do that. If I haven't got a lot of boobage, that doesn't matter. Harry's wife appeared on season two of NBC's Deal or No Deal 16 years ago. She first stood beside briefcase number 11 for two episodes, then moved to number 24. She left the show midway through the season. She said, I ended up quitting the show. I was so much more than what was being objectified on the stage. You keep telling yourself that. I didn't like feeling forced to be all lux and little substance. Well, that's what you are. And that's how it felt for me at the time being reduced to this specific archetype. No stereotype. The word bimbo. Adding... It's a word that is used to cut down a beautiful woman to kind of say, well, she's beautiful, but maybe she's slutty or maybe she's silly or stupid. Harry's wife said that she wants her own daughter, Lilibet, to be valued for her brain. Well, given who her mother and father reportedly are, it's not looking too clever for Lilibet. Uh, she said, I want our daughter to aspire to be slightly, to be slightly higher. Yeah, I want my Lily to want to be educated and want to be smart and to pride herself on those things. Well, so much brilliant insight here. There's a further article by Martin Robinson, also from the Mail Online, talking about the Duchess of Sussex said she was grateful for the work as she tried to break through as an actress and pay the bills, but disliked how it made me feel. 
Speaking on her new Archetypes pod crap with Paris Hilton called Breaking Down the Bimbo, Harry's wife said that she wants her own daughter Lilibet to be valued first for her brain rather than her beauty. It then repeats about the episodes that she's been on and it again talks about the lining up for beauty treatments including padding in your bra to attach fake eyelashes and put in hair extensions. She said we were given we were even given spray tan vouchers each week. Presumably you've kept some of those because there was a very cookie cutter idea of precisely what we should look like. It was solely about our beauty. Harry's wife added that a woman in charge of the show would tell her to suck it in before filming began, uh, presumably in order to suck in her stomach on camera. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Harry's wife also admitted she judged Paris Hilton ahead of interviewing her for her Archetypes podcast, repeats what was stated in the other Mail article. The Duchess of Sussex appeared on the show before her breakthrough on the hit show Suits, before she met Prince Harry. She said, I was surrounded by smart women on that stage with me, but that wasn't the focus of why we were there, and I ended up leaving with this pit in my stomach. Like I said, I was thankful for the job, but not for how it made me feel, which was not smart. Well, we're not really hearing a lot about what Paris Hilton had to say in this episode. It seems to be that there's a lot of talking about her own experiences, which is hardly a surprise. It's at an early juncture, and I'm sure more will come out, which, of course, I will cover in due course as it's reported on. But at this moment in time, what we've learned so far from the RC Wipes pod crap is it's Harry's wife talking about herself and her own experiences with Paris Hilton there also, occasionally getting a word in. Let's dive below the line promptly and see what the people of the Daily Mail have to say about what they have read so far. Octomerty. Thought we had peace and quiet for a while. Then, me loves me. Nobody forced her to apply and take the job. Los Alamos. If she wanted to be perceived as smart, she should have chosen a career outside of acting. City Trader 7-9. She was eye candy. If she wanted to apply for the role of presenter, she was welcome to. This woman is a bore. Cat Lady 123, and another podcast about me, 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 and me. Unique identity. You chose to do the show, and you might not have been where you are today without it, which personally I believe would have been a good thing. Mike 33333. Not her again. I thought she wanted to enjoy her privacy and private. Manchester is blue 1234. But you made the choice to do it. Guilty by accusation. I miss Queen Elizabeth II, whose heart was broken by this duo. Gods in bins. Why did she take the job in the first place then? Bailey 24. Plenty to say for somebody who wanted privacy. Knackered nurse. Her choice. Pildy Rose. Oh good, more of this drivel. Aero 1962. The privacy training isn't working. S.Y. Jones 69. All that time at university studying academia gone to waste. New Yorker, then why take the job then? Petalbert, welcome to the real world. Generation X, she's come very far since. Amazing what marrying a real life prince can do for your life. Bad Fly, she's absolutely hopeless at keeping out of the limelight in order to live a normal life with her husband. I want peace and quiet. No one made her apply for the job. Fellas, here we go again. Scarlett Wilson, why take the job in the first place? Magtech, self-praise is no recommendation. Oys, doctor, stop moaning. Talking about herself, again. Thought she was supposed to be interviewing guests. Lady Moon, this is top news. Hamblegarl, the only thing this woman is is a comedian. Bubblegum One, I don't know anyone who listens to these podcasts. Nothing I want to spend my value time doing. I'm fed up with all of this. Paris Hilton, well, that says what the calibre of her podcast is. Dog's Life, so this is headline news, DM. Hmm. Plutonus 3.0, not her again and again and again. And on it goes. The comments about you didn't have to choose to do that. It's just her talking about herself. And, of course, another dull, vacuous pod crap by Harry's wife talking about her grievances, bringing up the past about being a briefcase girl, but then trying to revise that history by saying, but I didn't really like the way that it made me feel. 
And poor old Paris Hilton sits there wondering, why, why am I on this programme? When do I speak? Undoubtedly, there'll be more for me to share with you in due course. But, at least, in a land or a world of constant change, one thing that remains the same. Harry's wife is crap at podcasts, and all she ever does is talk about herself. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.